we have patients that have such bone loss in their upper jaw that they can't adequately have implants kind of in the front regions or have their sinuses elevated and rebuilt. Oftentimes these patients are told they have no options. Well, the option that's present for them is that we do something that's called a zygoma implant. Your zygoma bone is your cheekbone. It's right here. Okay, we have it on both sides. And in order to have implants work and take, we need to have good stable structure to be able to place the implant so that it holds onto the implant. Oftentimes when we don't, we are forced to graft, regrow the bone. That bone is never really as good as your own bone. That adds a factor into it. And then sometimes we just can't graft. Sometimes there's nothing that you can graft or rebuild to. Instead of patients being forced into a protocol where they can only have one or the other, incorporating the zygoma implant into some treatment plans for patients is a, a wonderful option for them. And it is a, a little more involved procedure. It should be done only by a qualified surgeon that has experience, that has oral surgical training backgrounds, and experience in these procedures. I myself perform a large number of these procedures for patients. Quite frankly, when you start to go into the planning phase for a patient and you talk with them, and you get all of the necessary input and requirements, the, the, the three-dimensional CAT scan, um, the pictures of the patient, the, the models, and we do all this planning for the patient. And someone who's coming in just to have the earlier procedures we talked about, that all on four for the upper, understanding when the implants put at the back part, the angles here, you know, into the bone, when you have the right amount of bone to do that. One of the reasons that I see a lot of patients coming to see me for procedures they've had done on the top and for failures is that instead of choosing this option initially, which was the best option for that patient because of their structure, other options were chose that just didn't work out very long. I mean, and you know, a dental implant can last you a lifetime, but it's kind of like your teeth. If they're not taken care of, if you put too much pressure on your teeth, if you know the teeth aren't fixed or, or maintained the right way, you're going to lose them. And an implant is the same. If you don't take care of the implant, if you don't put the right type of tooth on it, if you don't evaluate and plan this the right way by having the right dimensions and the right, for lack of a better way to say this, engineering, because a lot of this is really engineering. We're evenly spacing forces of the bite, especially the lower jaw, which is a hinge, based on the upper jaw, which is deficient. We need to have good spacing of these implants in good bone. If there's no bone, then we have to do something. And the option for the upper jaw for that for patients that have had this done that's failed, for patients that just don't have any bone, for long-time denture wears that don't have any bone in the front, is the cheekbone. It can be a wonderful procedure for patients that they can allow them to enjoy teeth that day and then enjoy a upper restoration that doesn't have a palate. It's clear so you can taste your food, the speech and pronunciation of your words are clear, not muffled with a denture, and it's a really a wonderful option for patients.